We're going to cover layer 2 switching now. First thing that we'll show you is how to look at the MAC address table. Every device that connects to your switch has a MAC address. And uh, within the show command, so we're, we're not in, in uh, uh, configuration mode. Uh, so we're going to do show ethernet switching table. And now we can see the two devices that are connected to my system and their MAC addresses. There is another way to look at this. Instead of show ethernet switching, we're going to show MAC address table. Exactly the same information, just presented through two different commands. Great, great tool for troubleshooting. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to now show a static lag. Uh, so we have two ports. We want to uh, connect them together and have um, the bandwidth between two devices um, doubled or tripled or quadrupled. You can add as many ports uh, as the hardware allows um, on our switches. So this is called a static lag. So we're going to set an interface. Oh, I've got to go in the set mode or configuration mode. Set interface, aggregate, ethernet. And then I can pick any of these numbers. And this will vary based on the device itself as far as like how many aggregate Ethernet um, or lag groups that can be created on this device. So I can go ahead and choose the last one, AE48. Now we go about adding ports to that. So set interface, gigabit Ethernet, GE. Um, let's go... Uh, um, I guess we'll do one, one, three, ether options, 802.3 AD, and we tell it which one to add it to. Now we're also going to add in number four, and then commit it. All right, so now let's look and see what we did. Run show, interface, aggregate ethernet, AE48. You can see that there are two in there. Um, what other information do we have here? So we've got the physical interface, which we consider that to be a physical interface at this point. Uh, it shows you the uh, speed, the MTU, um, that um, is down currently. And it does have a hardware address associated with it, a few statistics. And if I was to connect it to another couple of ports on a different switch, um, then uh, and, and had static lag running on the other side, then the status would now go to up. All right, well, I jumped over to another system that does have a couple of aggregates uh, configured. These are some Dell um, open networking switches. Uh, if I look here, I'm going to show interface aggregate Ethernet. I've got two of them set up. I'm going to go ahead and put in AE12. And this shows uh, all the information about it up and active. I can also do a brief showing of it, which shows that I have 20 gigabits total and that the aggregate is up and running. Now the next step after you get past a static lag is to go ahead and configure an LACP lag. Set interface aggregate ethernet AE let's do 47 aggregate ether options LACP enable true then with LACP we can specify a minimum number of ports that we want to be active in order for this link to be considered up We're going to say one port is sufficient. And it's telling us, hey, that's already set. <laughs> so we could put in two as the minimum. And then if any one of the ports goes down, then the whole um, um, LACP lag will show down as well. Then, just like I did under the static lag, I'm going to set interface, um, gigabit ethernet, TE, one slash one slash one, Ether options, 802AD, AE47. 
and go set the next port and commit. And if we go over to our other session, you can see on this one, when I look at it, um, I believe these are aggregates, but the best way for us to find out is to let's go into conf mode. We'll do a show um, display set. And we're going to match on a AE, or actually we'll match on LACP and see what shows up. So both of my um, aggregates are LACP. So here's how I would look at it. Show run, interface, aggregate ethernet, which we already did, um, AE12. Let's see where it shows us that we are running LACP. There we go. Aggregated link protocol, LACP. If we go back to the other system, when we look at this one, show interface AE48, we will see that the aggregate link protocol is set to static. All right, next, VLANs. VLANs are fun, we all use them. So, first of all, we're gonna set our interface, Gigabit Ethernet, GE11, uh, we'll do, we'll just mess with three since we don't have anything plugged into that one. Family, Ethernet, switching, port mode, So to change the mode of a port, we type set interface, gigabit ethernet, we put in the port number, family is the keyword, ethernet switching, port mode, and by default everybody's access, so we would put in trunk mode. Now this means that multiple VLANs can exist on a single port. We can still have a native VLAN. Alright, so let's talk about the native VLAN. So we're going to set VLANs, VLAN ID 5. That creates a VLAN. Then we're going to set interface gigabit ethernet GE 1 slash 1 slash 3 family ethernet switching native VLAN ID 5. Commit. What this does is it says that I'm going to carry multiple VLANs, but if somebody gets plugged into this that does not uh, speak VLANs, does not put a VLAN tag on it, I'm going to put all those packets in VLAN 5. So let's talk about creating a few more VLANs. So set VLAN, VLAN ID. I can create a range of VLANs, 10 to 20. This creates 11 new VLANs as soon as I hit commit. The problem with doing this is that um, if I say I decide I don't want VLAN 11, I cannot delete VLAN 11. I actually have to delete 10 to 20 and commit it. So many uh, administrators will go ahead and create individual VLANs if they think that they're going to need to uh, um, delete and re-add um, I can do like that. Oh, see, I actually had it in that first one, VLAN 12 and 13. So I'm going to do that. Now I have two different commands. But I've still got, let's see here, show. This is good for you guys to see this. Show um, display set. And you'll see that I actually have three commands because I typed all those in. I actually have to remove this one. And now that got rid of it. So I've added not a range of VLANs, but multiple VLANs, but I still did it in the same command. So even when I go back and look at this, if I want to delete a single VLAN, I can't delete only 14, right? Because it doesn't recognize. I have to delete 13, 14, 15. So while these range commands and being able to specify multiple VLANs on a same line are useful because they're pretty quick, they do have a drawback of not being able to delete a particular VLAN. So it's actually 
easier to come in here and set a new VLAN and then do 14 and then do 15 and commit it because now I can go back in and choose to delete 14 without it impacting any other VLANs. All right, so that's an important thing to remember. And once I've got uh, these VLANs set, then um, I can apply them um, as untagged to um, multiple um, trunk ports. Now, uh, this, uh, let's see here. So let's go to the next one. So I've already got, uh, let's see, which one is set to trunk? Let's do that by using um, our show command and match. And we're going to look at VLAN. So here's all my VLAN. Here's the one, one line that I have so far. Let's, uh, oh, look at that. I've got one that I needed to commit. Let's go ahead and commit it. I could tell it was being needing to be committed because of the carrot. All right, so let's set interface gigabit ethernet GE113 family ethernet switching. And instead of doing native VLAN, I'm going to type VLAN members. And I'm going to assign it 13, 14, 15. Now, if I do that, remember, in order to remove 13 or 14 or 15 out of this, I would have to remove this entire command and type in a new one. And it's pretty picky about it, so we're just going to do one at a time. Accomplishes the same thing, and then commit it. Oh, I don't have a VLAN 14 because I removed it earlier. Now, in order for me to get rid of that and to have this commit take place, I'm going to have to either add in... A VLAN, which let's just go ahead and do that. Set VLANs, VLAN ID 14. Now that I've done that, I can commit the whole thing because everything exists for that set of commands to go in and be successful. So I have just now added a VLAN to a particular port. Now we can do the same thing with aggregate Ethernet ports because they are considered real ports for our purposes.